So this is a huge technological challenge. Um, so I, I know there is a lot of jargon here, but just think of what what's happening in a space station. You have something flying 200 miles above us. Uh, it's going around the Earth every 90 minutes. Um, and in this module, you have to somehow maintain a habitable environment for astronauts and human beings. Huge, huge, um, uh, huge, huge deal. And this is the reason, this is a very select club. Not many countries have done it. So, so I think it's a very big technological achievement. And so what are some of the challenges uh, for this mission? Uh, because as we heard from Leroy Chow, you know, in, in many cases, the uh, Chinese have not put a lot of astronauts in space uh, for quite some time. So just talk to us, frame it for us, if you will, about some of the challenges facing China's space program with this. See, I don't think it's a big deal. There is always a learning curve and there is always hiccups. And ultimately, um, somehow, somehow things have a way to work out. Um, I think... China obviously started this journey much later than the U.S. did. So obviously there's some catching up to do. But if you look at other facets, like the lunar program, um, China went from landing a rover on the moon to um, surviving a rover on the dark side of the moon to a sample return all within maybe 10 or 15 years. So there are ways to get past this, and I don't think that's a showstopper. Um, so it will be interesting going forward how this evolves. But at this point, I don't think there's any reason to think that this will not happen as planned. You, you mentioned the uh, effort to go to the dark side of the moon. Uh, that was very ambitious. Uh, they do have an ambitious plan. Give us a sense of perspective. How does this fit into the wider China space plan? See, see China started this race much later than the U.S. They were maybe 30 years late, late to the party. So I think in a month or so, they are going to try to land a rover on Mars, which is itself a very big achievement if it happens. It hasn't happened yet, but the or Mars orbiter has already happened. And the lunar sample return mission, which is a huge deal. So China has been able to return samples from the moon the first time after the Apollo program. Not a, not a small, small measure at all. So I think overall, NASA, um, the, NASA has been progressing on different things, but China has been making serious headway and defining its own trajectory in space exploration. You heard uh, Leroy Chow and, and John Zarello's report talking about how disappointed he is about the chilly relationship between the United States and China when it comes to working together on space. Do you see a time when that might change? And talk to us about China's involvement with some of these other countries. They're, they're talking about 17 other countries being involved. Right. So I think geopolitics and um, international relations are terribly hard to forecast. Uh, so it, it's very tough to know when it will be feasible and when not. And I, I don't think it's even disappointing that it's not happening. The reality is all these missions have international collaborators. China has a set of international collaborators. The U.S. has a set, set of international collaborators. And both will get there. So you have to just back up and see what's, what, what are we trying to do here. See, if you were in the early 1900s, going to the South Pole was a big deal. Today, there's a base there. People live there 365 days a year. So we are trying to do something in orbit like that as a human race and something on the moon, which is the next step, which Jeff Bezos and Blue Origins and NASA is thinking of next. So we all live in a habitation module. Even in sitting here in Washington, D.C., we have air conditioning and shade, a shade, a different um, things which make us comfortable. In a space station, we, we need probably a pressurized vehicle on, on the moon. You need something else, radiation protection. But can humans move from Earth to space? And that is the big picture. And I think different countries will get there in different trajectories and, and add to the human journey.